Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and welcome back to Let's Play Maneater. This is episode 11. So last time we became the biggest shark possible, as we are now a mega shark, and we are nearing the end of our journey. But I'm here, right next to the killer whale apex. You can see I jumped into this little pool over this rock. I don't know if we can break through this glass. Nope. This bubble dome is just here to stop us, but we can just jump over. The white and black attack. The orca. That is a weird looking orca. Like, there are a couple different uh, subtypes of orca, essentially, based on where they live that look different, but I don't think any of them look like this. Level 40. So. This is pretty much a recreation of the first boss of Jaws Unleashed. We're fighting an, an orca in a marine world kind of environment. Okay, I want to get a picture of the orca before we actually kill it. I'm probably going to get killed in the process. Okay, turn away. Turn back. That orca is so unhappy that its fin has curled over completely. She does not look pleased. Also, the texture keeps reloading on it. Okay, I'm gonna die if I keep trying to snap. Also, the tough part here is that there is no fish around. <laughs> Coral grouper, that's new. Uh, <laughs> not really what I intended, but this is kind of interesting. Shark versus orca. Who will win in a battle of mega predators? All right. We actually got to fight this, but oh man. I kind of got to get some distance from it first, so I can heal. I mean, I don't know if she'll follow us out through here. She's kind of slow, even for an orca. Nope. That's her leash zone. So, let's get a few meals in, and then we'll head back in. Another orca just hanging out, out here. The ocean waters are driven constantly by tides, currents, and Saudi-owned super units. It's weird that none of these orcas are in pods, but I guess that would be kind of unfair if they actually were in their normal group size, because we would get dominated. <laughs> it's one thing to eat one orca, but to try to fight ten of them as a single shark, even a single comically oversized shark is probably too much. The ocean is a fluid and fascinating world, always changing, forever in motion. I mean, it's quite literally a fluid world. I kind of riffed on him being the narrator in this, but I think Chris Parnell is doing fine. He has a lot of good lines mixed in there and kind of snark. Where are you at? I hear you roaring, but I don't see you. There she is. This almost sounds like <laughs> Doom Eternal music. Like it's close, but it's missing a few instruments. Oh man, we got yeeted through a hoop. She's good. Much as I mentioned in Jaws Unleashed, this is really not how this fight would go, because Great Whites generally do not win against Orcas. Great Whites are actually afraid of Orcas, in that they will avoid an area where Orcas are if they pick up their 
you know, vocalizations from miles away. Once the featured attraction at Marine Mammal Parks now have a new favorite trick, killing things. That's not really new. And all these people sort of watch that happen. There's just people randomly wandering around this empty, abandoned marine park. of training and eight dollars to become a licensed shark hunter. Those very few bother with this formality. I mean, hey, if you don't have your shark hunting license, how are they going to find out that you've been shark hunting? Three them kind of whales, they got their fish fingers. You could say I got a real keen eye for talent. Oh, the wheelers really got to work on those side areas. So, when he's not hunting down sharks, he also captures orcas and sells them off. Yeah. Scaly Pete has poisoned Sapphire Bay. Uh, okay. Be careful, Scaly Pete has poisoned the whole region. Albino wildlife, mutagen X gains, minus movement speed, minus fat, minerals, and protein gains. I mean, it doesn't really affect us, we only have one reason to go back there. But I'm guessing that's gonna spread through the other areas. She's close. She's real close. Alright, so... Cave, the best for last. Because it's the last area, so it should be the best one, since it's the gulf. We didn't even get a check on Scaly Pete, either. It's just like, nope, go to the next one. Hmm. There's some kind of tentacles there. I wanted to see what the mission is called, though. The Devil and the Deep Blue Sea. Alright, so maybe that'll be the Mega Shark. So before we go there, we're gonna go to the grotto here. We're gonna do this stupid revenge mission that I keep avoiding, because I want to see what the poison water looks like. Yeah, be nice. Oh, that's the, that's the closed window. How did you guys really get in here? I mean, with this section here, you really can't say that they weren't the least bit aware of Jaws Unleashed. Because wasn't there even a window like this, which is how we got out of Marine World after we killed the Orca? Seals can never catch a break because they are the most nutritious animal for large predators. <laughs> northeast across the Atlantic towards English seaside towns filled with cranky pensioners, donkey rides, and heroin addicts. All right, let's go to Stanky Bay. Oh, no, that's not the grotto. Once more, the shark turns back to this place of centered calm. Okay, so now we can be a bonehead. Real bonehead shark move. Wow, nine meters, I just noticed. We've gotten even bigger. Uh, <laughs> nice bone eye. It just looks so much more comical now. I mean, what does this do? Ramming damage, crew knockback resistance, boat crew damage, ram force bonus, 3% damage resistance, you know, typical bone stuff. What happens when we upgrade this? How much of a boner can we become? The boniest. I mean, bone is the one I haven't really been upgrading because it's Even a not exciting. Can't help but marvel at this consumerist battle. We'll equip it for a bit, though. It's definitely a very different look from what we've had. <laughs> We're basically a tank shark like this. Alright, so... Let's 
Scaly Pete is now poisoning all of these ecosystems just to kill this one shark. And it's not even killing us, it's just making us slow. <laughs> the eyes just look really goofy. I mean, the pink eyes are already kind of like, take them or leave them. I think they look good, but I can understand why you wouldn't. But here it's just like, let's make them real big. I think we shoved one of those men through the dock. I mean, putting aside even the destruction of the ecosystem, he's also poisoning this place where all these swimmers are. Sharks in their place. Which obviously is more important to the city. So we don't have a Planet of the Apes situation on our hands. Wow. <laughs> that was a real jump. Dad needs to take me here for sailing lessons up on his trawler waving his hunting rifle, yelling at me to sail faster. Ah, poor Kyle. You were too good for this world. Alright. We're being hunted, so we're gonna have to swim out of here. Can't jump that. I, don't know. Maybe she's scared of us. I wish we had a mutation that made us faster. Because hey, shark. I don't think any of them really do that. Is that it? Nah, that ain't it. Another shark hunt draws to a close. Alright. So we want to get to the Gulf one, which I believe is closer to the Prosperity Sands one. But yeah, probably like one or two more episodes of this at the rate we're going, because... A quiet space is the ideal stage for the shark to meditate and harness her pure potentiality. We just need to clear out the remaining collectibles in the previous areas and finish up with this area and Crawfish Bay. I don't know if Crawfish Bay is where the final boss is going to be or if that's basically just an extra area at this point. You know, I don't even know if there's a grotto there. It's a very small area. I mean, we could actually just go there right now, you know. All we have to do is swim all the way out there. It's best to respond to incidents such as these with a philosophical bent, to coexist with our finny friends in relative peace. Are you talking about the incident where we batted a human at a sailboat? <laughs> we just need to coexist and then the sharks will not throw people at our boat. So, the Gulf should be the most Each interesting year, area. North American offshore drilling rigs leak about 880,000 gallons of oil into the sea, leaving it for marine wildlife who know nothing about running a profitable energy company. Because, I mean, this is the most open ocean area we have access to. The planet's great tides encircle the globe in constant motion. I'm kind of thinking now that we're never going to actually get any kind of mention of the mutagens or what's going on in these grottos that has, you know, a submarine studying them. Weird signs collected down here. Alright. Okay, that's already all maxed out. I guess I kind of have upgraded most things. We didn't get any new organs, right? No. Nothing exciting there. I 
I mean, I almost wish that they went a little crazier with the upgrades and just had more of them. Level 45 Sperm Whale. Alright, I guess we know what the apex for this area is going to be. Not actually that big compared to our Mega Shark, though. I mean, it's going to attack me. I just want to do a size comparison. Oh, we got bumped. Um, no, I don't think sperm whales are all that vulnerable. <laughs> They're one of the most aggressive fighters, or at least defenders, in the ocean. That said, it's not really chasing me at this point. Oil's well that ends well. 1970, oil tankers have spilled 5.7 million tons of petroleum into the sea. This is sometimes upsetting to marine life. Only kill five, though, surprisingly. Probably gonna be on the oil rig. But yeah, I think the problem with them adding more mutation types is that there isn't really a requirement for them, because, you know, there's not enough different stuff that we're doing. Is that a blue shark? No, it's just a Mako. Looked a little blue, but blue sharks are very long and tubular. Oh, they're divers. That's even easier. I guess I'm gonna have to double down on hunting down the humans. Because we still have four more bounty hunters to go through. For backup, we made some real bad fish cues because of these oil tankers spinning. But it brings a lot of money into the economy. Can't argue with that. I mean, do you really think that Scaly Pete cares about environmental damage? Not like he's killing sharks because he cares about the fish. Assume 10 humans. Underwater museum. Is there going to be divers there too? Is that why it's underwater? Also, that's not even in the right zone, is it? No, the gulf is really long. Okay, so, population control, ten hammerheads, and destroy the target. Ten hammerheads, eh? I guess we'll go for the yacht, since we are in boat smashing mode right now. So that looks like it's outside of our range, but I think this curves around. Kind of wondering about these pipes with smoke coming out of them underwater. Well, you see, if we release it underwater, it won't damage the atmosphere. It'll just damage the ocean instead. But the ocean is basically like a big old sponge to soak up all the Earth's pollutants. I've had my food fun for the day. It seems Port Clovis has forgotten all about its rogue shark, for now. Again. Okay, where's our target boat? I don't see any other boats in the water. Oh, there it is. It's interesting that different mutations have different music when you use the ability. Four carat gold fixtures, two discos, circular staircases, and a mosaic swimming pool. The Chatelaine is still only Port Clovis's second most ostentatious yacht. No. Is this the the hammerhead zone? That is. I didn't realize they were so close together. <laughs> protein caches like this one are a convenient and tasty way for sharks to increase their protein intake. It's gonna be a pain to get all the collectibles here, though, because there's 21 caches. I mean, 
this is the only time we've had a population control that was kill X amount of predators. It's surprising that it took until the final zone to get one of those. But I guess the sperm whale is supposed to be the... the dangerous predator in this area. Since these missions always have some kind of predator hanging around. I love that I can just, like, knock them out with my tail. Alright, so now we gotta do a revenge mission, which is apparently right here. Not seeing it, though. Right there. Is it just one diver? Oh no, it's a few more. You know, just a, a tourist group of armed divers. Go away, Hammerhead. The university sends their students out here every summer to study the reefs. Shit. I guess we all got different ideas about summer fun, yeah? I mean, I think diving would be pretty summer fun. But then again, I don't live on a coast, so I don't have the choice. I am landlocked as all get out. Let's see that face! I wonder if I would have less of a love and adoration for the ocean if I lived, you know, on the coast. Would it be more of a, eh, it's just there if I was close to it all the time? I don't think so. Alright, so it wants us to hunt the sperm whale. Level 55. Let's go to Flamingo Joe's. This my on. The hunt is over. There will be an inevitable rush on dollar traps at Flamingo Joe's. Though honestly, I don't think the level matters that much at this point. It just means that we can't fit them in our mouth and they can fit us in their mouth. That's about it. Sperm whales are one of the few whales that can actually use something other than their tail for fighting, since they do ram with their head as well. But most whales, like humpbacks and gray whales and whatnot, actually will just slam sharks in out of existence with their tail if they get attacked, or their calves get attacked. I'm surprised that none of these population control missions have been to kill humans, because they kind of need their population controlled as well. I just don't think a single shark would ever be able to put a dent in that population. Where's the last one? There, there you are. You gave yourself away. Y'all Yo better believe those sewer lines need work. I've had campylobacteriosis, cryptosporidiosis, leptospirosis. Let me tell you, partner, that ain't no joke. And that's why you don't drink the tap water if you live in America. Especially if you live in the southern part of America.
quite a strange conglomeration of stuff will end up in the stomachs of sharks. I mean, pretty much the only reason to get the caches at this point is because they give us big chunks of resources, especially the minerals. Oh, two orcas in a small space. It's almost like they're living together. All right, so what do we have left? Gulf population control times two. Complete boss. Okay, apparently there's going to be a boss here. Spoilers. It's probably the Mega Shark and not Scaly Pete. Alright, so where are these population control? Oh, they're all the way back there. That's Canada's the battle is over, but the war goes on. I've got three different kinds of predator chasing me. <laughs> They all want to be the first to take a swing at the Mega Shark and try to take on our mantle. You know, I kind of hope that we get more shark games in the near future. Because I would like to see an underwater environment like this done by one of the companies that have massive budgets. Because, you know graphics have reached a point where these, this place could look pretty damn impressive if you threw the full weight of a AAA budget at it. But of course, do underwater games have mass market appeal? Eh, probably not. There's plenty of people who don't give a shit about the ocean. And they're like, yeah, fish are boring, fish are stupid. If it ain't war or football, I don't give a shit. Population control is dead ahead. <laughs> the hammerhead never even had a chance to catch up. Another orca that needs murdering. That's an uh, interesting reference for the mission name here, Hammer Horror. Hammer, of course, being a the old film company that would make many of the classic horror movies. Back in like the 40s, 30s? Why are there so many sharks hanging out here? It makes sense though that hammerheads would be the shark that we are fighting in big groups like this because they're one of the few sharks that gather together in huge schools. I believe specifically it's the scalloped hammerhead that schools like that, but they'll gather together in groups of like a thousand. And they just kind of hang out during the day, and then at night, they split up and hunt individually. But one of the beliefs about the reason why they do that is for protection from predators. And clearly that didn't work out for them here. Hammerheads are fascinating and weird, but they're also one of the more timid sharks around divers. It's actually apparently very easy to spook them just by being around. What the hell is- oh. Why are there so many anchor chains coming out of this thing, and why are they so weird looking? I mean, that doesn't even really look like an anchor, it's like a giant... plug? What's going on here? Oh, we can't get in there. I mean, that's... is that what anchors look like for this thing? I mean, the anchor's right there, so clearly not. I don't know what this thing is. Maybe it's just sucking oil right out of the ground. Kind of 
follow these and see where they go. They go outside of our allowed playground. So there's no idea what those are supposed to be. Alright. Let's head over here to our next hunt, and that should give us something new to do afterwards. I don't know if it's going to be a boss, or we have to do an apex first. I guess we have to do an apex first. Man, this area is so big and empty. I will say that despite my love of the ocean, I am still kind of afraid of open ocean. You know, the idea of, of like, taking a boat out here and just swimming around it, that seems real stupid to me. I'm fine with the idea of being on a boat in the open ocean. It's just, you know, being in the water. Even diving, I'm not sure I'd want to do in the pelagic zone. Because in the open ocean area like this, for the creatures that live there, it's pretty much kill or be killed, you know. Everything that they're going to encounter there is either a prey item that they can eat, a predator trying to eat them, or a competitor that they have to fight for prey items. So it's not surprising that that's where a lot of attacks have happened. Even if some of them have been pretty minor. A girlfriend sent me a video the other day of a oceanic white tip attack, in which it basically just gives someone a little nibble on the shoulder and then swims away as a kind of warning. You know, minor lacerations. And you can't tell me that that was a mistake either, because... Oceanic White Tip is a fairly large shark. If they wanted to take your shoulder off, they could. But yeah, I think I would stick to, you know, closer inland. I was going to go diving. Alright. I think it's safe to say that the apex of this area is going to be a... sperm whale. There's something just really enjoyable about yeeting animals like that. And look, he's fine. We just tossed him for a little bit of fun, like an orca would. Where is this whale? Of course. Of course it's at, like, the other end. Okay, we're going to fast travel back. I guess we'll do this Apex too, and then next time we'll find out what the boss is and what's left of the game. It's here in the grotto that the shark can discover the absolute serenity deep within her soul. I probably should equip more animal fighty abilities than Bone. Because Bone is not really meant for fighting big predators and whatnot. I just wish we had another headpiece for any of the other parts of the set. Hmm. Looking at them, it looks like... I'm not sure if these other ones have a head part. I mean, they all have five parts to them, so I guess it must. Alright, so do we want electric teeth or do we want shadow teeth? Bite damage... You know, we'll go with the, the the old shadow teeth. Real gangly looking ones. We only have one ahead of Lucian, so we'll stick with that. Um, electric body or shadow body? I mean, I like the stun. And apparently this does actually make us go faster, though it didn't feel like it. I guess we'll go with the electric. We'll go with the shadow tail. Alright. Let's get out there and kill the sperm whale and then call it an episode. This is going to be a really big whale, though, compared to us. There's another one of those weirdly stripy orcas. The cetacean assassin, the sperm whale. Seen here after destroying a boat. I'm really annoyed that I can't get a picture of this guy. In fact, let me fix that. We'll be right back. Alright, 
So yeah, when it breaks like that, you can exit the menu and then load back in in order to get it to work. So now we can actually get a good look at this guy. And of course it has to be a white sperm whale. Which is also full of anchors in addition to spears. <laughs> it is the meanest Moby Dick you ever did see. Alright, I am taking a beating here. So I took some hits before I resumed recording. So. The good thing is, it is very slow, so he's not going to be dashing after us like the Barracuda. We can double up and eat some of these humans to get our health back. Just imagine being that guy who's taking aim at a shark coming up on them with a spear, and then suddenly the shark turns into electricity and teleports behind you. I don't think we'll have any trouble with this. It was really only the first couple apexes that gave us trouble. Once we got a bit bigger, they didn't stand a chance. I mean, I think it was the Barracuda was the only one that took us multiple tries. At least until things quiet down, they run out of hard limit. Catastrophic level shark. That's us. We are a swimming cataclysm at this point. Back in the good old days, the world practically ran on sperm whale oil. Now we can only watch them from afar, dreaming of tapping their skulls for all that sweet spermaceti. Big, oily heads. Alright, let's consume these humans, because they have the mistake of being near our fight. That great white did not want anything to do with us, like, nope. Who is left? There is one man somewhere. Uh, I think I'm a little too far away. There he is. Really is just only one left. Where'd everybody go? Uh, I was really into scuba back when he was a teenager. This museum's the first place I took him after when he got certified. I mean, it must be nice being able to get certified as a teenager when you live on a coastline or just have rich parents. And there's an orca right by our grotto, so I guess we'll kill that too. What do we have for progression required? Golf progress, 50%. Okay, so... That is one of the things we need to do, is actually hit 50% completion here, which means doing a lot of collectible hunting. What are we at now? Why, why is it skipping over the map? There we go. So, golf, 40%. Not too bad. So, I think in between this episode and the next one, I'll do some collecting in this area, and we should be ready to progress at the start of the next episode. Sorry, Orca, but in the end, it has to be this way. <laughs> Only our shark can make history. With little fanfare, another bounty hunt comes to the club. So 
Sorry, Senator Orca. All right. So I think that'll do it for this episode of Man Eater. We're getting pretty close to the end now. Supercharged with gene-altering mutagens, the shark now has an asymmetric edge on the competition. But I'm kind of curious what kind of crazy shit we'll end up doing for, you know, the final boss or whatever, because I assume we're still going to do something like that if the first Scaly Pete boss fight was anything to go by. I just wish there had been more like that. The grotto provides a brief respite from the Sturm und Drang of the Gulf. Like, I almost wish that we had some kind of you know, marine predator that had a specific pattern we had to understand. Like, it would go in hiding in the rocks and we'd have to do something to get it to come out. You know, it's not like it's hard to make gameplay mechanics out of unusual behaviors for creatures. It just feels like they didn't want to go <laughs> that route, even though this game is anything but realistic. Alright, so she's got bioelectric tail, bioelectric head, and of course, brutal muscles. So... Definitely going to grind up my way to level 7 before the next episode so that we can take on Shannon Sims, a no-nonsense Coast Guard officer on the rise. Who doesn't actually want to help people as a Coast Guard officer, but just wants to rise through the ranks. Alright, so... What do we have left to level up? I mean, we have a lot of materials, so obviously we can level up. I guess we'll level up our tail. Full on black and purple tail. And then a big old bone smashing tail, which we don't have enough to max out. All right. Um, I think we, yeah. We've maxed out all the stuff that uses fat. And these bone teeth as well. Still never upgraded those because they're just too expensive for a material that's hard to get. Even with the the organ equipped, I tried equipping mineral digestion, and you really don't get much more. Alright, so I've been Shadefire, this is Maneater, and I hope you'll join me as we get very close to the finale. At the very least, we're definitely going to see Scaly Pete next time, I think. But until then, take care, folks. For more than three-fourths of geologic time, the land was uninhabited without a single destination spa anywhere to be seen.